we're going to take a look at something called a Newman projection. If you took a look at this, this is an ethane molecule. If you put your eyeball right here, and there's your beautiful eyelashes, whatever, and you're looking that direction towards the ethane molecule, uh, this brings up what we call now the Newman projection. If this is carbon 1 and this is carbon 2, that would make this carbon 1, this one here, the thing that looks like in front, and then this circle here represents carbon 2. Thus, this hydrogen right here, if you look in that direction, is this one right here. There's this hydrogen. I'll call it hydrogen A. Hydrogen with a little A. This hydrogen here is on the left as you look at it. So that's this hydrogen. I'll call it hydrogen B. And then hydrogen C, which would be slightly to the right of you, would be right there. As you look past the first carbon to the second carbon, you'll see this hydrogen down here. I'll call it hydrogen D. That's this one. As you look again past, you see this hydrogen. I'll call it hydrogen E. It's slightly to the left. And then you'll see hydrogen. I'll call it hydrogen F. That's this one right here, slightly to the right as it looks straight on. This Newman projection can sometimes be helpful, especially for different conformations of uh, organic molecules because there's free rotation around the single bond between carbon one and carbon two. And so you can see different things could happen. What if this rotated to look like this? So the two hydrogens, as you look end on, all the hydrogens are kind of lined up. So that would mean, like, let's say this is the back rotates just a little bit, about 30 degrees. So you'd have hydrogen A, and then you'd have hydrogen E all lined up. Well, hydrogen A, A, B, and C never moved. There's A, B, and C. The hydrogen E rotated a little bit, hydrogen F rotated down here, and hydrogen, uh, let's see, where's that one? Hydrogen D rotated over. So the rotation went like this. D went here, uh, F went here, and E went there. So since there's free rotation, these are constantly spinning. This is called the eclipsed, uh, the, <laughs> sorry, staggered. The one on the left is called the staggered because the hydrogens are staggered. And as I kind of uh, alluded to just a second ago, this is called the eclipsed. That is, one's right on top of each other, just like, say, a solar eclipse or something. One hydrogen right on top of each other. Because of sterics, this one is less stable. Sterics is whenever you get Entities with electrons too close to each other, they don't like it, they are too close. They would prefer to be staggered, which is more stable. So the staggered position, definitely more stable. Now, this can get more intricate as we add more entities, or I guess I should say substituents, uh, around the Newman projection. So let's say we had Let's start with this. So here's my template. Start with your template. That's what it looks like. Let's put a CH3 here. Let's put a CH3 here and make the rest hydrogens that I just won't draw. This is the staggered position. Uh, let's see, I'll write that up here, staggered. And it has a special name when the two substituents that don't match the hydrogens are the furthest away as they possibly be, can be from each other. We call that anti. So this is a staggered anti position. Now let's rotate uh, the back this way. So I'm going to rotate the back this way. What's that going to do? Well, let's redraw our template. And the CH3 didn't move at the top. That one's staying stationary. We're moving the back the second carbon. So that puts uh, this CH3 right here. Now, this is eclipsed. I'll write that here. It's eclipsed. 
Uh, and there's definitely, it's definitely at a higher energy. Let's rotate that back one again. So we're going to rotate it one more time. Or we'll do this a couple times, but you'll start to get the hang of it as we do it. Again, with CH3 in the front, still hasn't moved. We're only spinning the back for our purposes. This uh, CH3 that was down here is now up here. Everything else remembers hydrogens. This is again staggered. Um, and specific, we have a specific name for this as opposed to the anti where these two are the most farthest away that they can be from each other, when they start to get a little closer, we call that gauche. G-A-U-C-H-E. That's a gauche position. Now let's rotate a little bit further. So I'm going to rotate again. The back is going to rotate just a little bit more. Uh, so now, the CH3 that was in the front originally still has not moved, but now that other CH3 is caught up to it, and it's right up there with it. Uh, now they're right on top of each other. This is eclipsed, and this is the highest energy eclipsed position because this is the worst sterics here. These are two big groups bumping into each other. That's a pretty high energy position. If you rotate one more time, So we keep the front the same, and then the back looks like this. We're back to a staggered gauche position. Mm -hmm. uh, energetically, what's going on? I'm going to make a little graph here. The y-axis, I'll do a PE for potential energy. And the x-axis, we'll just plot what happens as we go through a rotation angle. Well, what's happening? Let's say this is, this seems like the lowest energy so far because the big groups are far as away as they can from each other. So that's here. As we get to the first eclipse position, we're up at a slightly higher energy. As we get to the gauche position, we've gone down in energy a little bit. Uh, because they are staggered, but because it's gauche, it's a higher energy than what we started with. Now, we get to the worst eclipse position, so I'll put that higher. It's higher than the previous eclipse because the CH3s are right on top of each other. And then, when we get to the next position, we're at a gauche again. Same energy as this one right here, so I'm going to go back down to there. And we would repeat so on and so forth. Uh, the next eclipse position would be this energy. So it looks something like that. And it would go through this cycle, this cycle because it keeps rotating and rotating the back. And this kind of graphs the energetics. And often on an exam or a homework, your instructor will give you something and they'll want you to draw the Newman projection and then rotate one of the carbons and draw out a graph that looks just like this. Um, and I'm sure you can see their notes and kind of see examples that they do regarding this.